Welcome to Real Life Mentoring, where we explore real life issues to help you make an authentic difference in the world. Hi, thanks for tuning in. It's Chris and Christina again, and today we're going to be talking about suffering in silence. <sighs> Chris, where do you where do you see that people are suffering in silence? Well, first of all, I would say I know people are have suffered in silence uh-huh. when as a trusted mentor, a man will sit down with me and open up and get that that pain, that junk out of his head. Yeah. In fact, let's give the backstory to why we're talking about why suffer in silence in the first place. Chris and I have been mentoring people for 30 plus years. That's the whole reason for us to start this podcast is to give people tools. You, the listener, if you're a mentor, give you tools. If you are looking for a mentor, we want to give you a heads up of here's uh, what to look for with a mentor because we know we've seen firsthand, we've experienced ourselves what the power of a mentor can do in a person's life. And as we've been reflecting over the reoccurring themes that we've seen the last 30 plus years, too many people suffer too long in silence. And so we want to address some of those, maybe talk about why that is, and then offers just some practical tools. So Chris, we were talking beforehand, of course, you from a man's point of view, me from a women, a woman's point of view, what are some of those situations or reoccurring themes that you've seen over the last 30 years that men are suffering in silence? If you're married, they don't know how to lead their their wives, their families. They don't feel maybe valued because of what's been said to them in the past or what has not been said. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's many areas I I could talk about that. Men and women are suffering in marriages they don't know how to communicate with one another. Sure. You know, the phone is a crazy thing. It's a, yeah. it's a real gift, Yeah. but the, the smartphone, and yet we can send texts to one another and never really communicate with other people. Yeah. That happens in marriages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not acceptable, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, honey, can you pick up milk when you're out at the store mm-hmm. or vice versa? To, to, for me to tell you important things, that's just not healthy. And it causes people to suffer in silence. I mean, the voice is not heard. Right. The, the Anyway, there's much more we could say about that. Right. And we see that with women, too, as we've talked about, that um, they may be more vocal in sharing with their close friends their struggle, but they're not sharing it with their husband, <laughs> or there's not a safe place for them to really get some help. So what's another area that you see people struggling? Well, uh, let me address, in let's address our marriage a few years ago. Sure. And we have a strong marriage today, but it, it takes ongoing work, mm-hmm. right? Oh boy, does Tor- it ever. <laughs> no, why do you say it that way? <laughs> Just kidding. No, but it takes work. I'm kidding. It takes deliberate choices sure. every day. Yeah. But several years ago, you and I looked at one another and we said we both felt like we were roommates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that happens a lot in marriage. And it, it can, it, like it slips in on you without realizing it some days. Right. And to find that, it's like there wasn't fighting going on. There wasn't impropriety with finances. There Is, wasn't you're You're, you're going activity. to work. I'm going to work. We're, we're raising our daughters together. We are. We're doing life side by side without looking at each other. Yeah, we're not yeah. not re- not real conversations right. because we were so tired or weary. We didn't take enough dates. We weren't sexually intimate very often, and mm-hmm. all these things. And you look at one another, you go, "Who are you?" This is like a roommate, and that's yeah. not acceptable in a marriage. Um, and so, we either talk about it or we suffer in silence. Yeah, yeah. Another area we've seen people deal with depression and anxiety mm-hmm. to the point that it, it destroys a man or woman's identity. Yeah. I mean, as we've shared, you and I sought out counseling last year about this time. Uh-huh. I really believe I was going through depression. Yeah. And it gave me such uh, compassion for other people who have gone through depression and going through it. Yeah. Um, I will say, uh, if you are in your 50s or 60s listening to this, I will say that I believe younger women or younger people today in their 20s and 30s have a better handle they're not afraid to maybe suffer in silence as in terms of mental health i think there's a real openness um doesn't mean that people are still not struggling in in silence about those things 
Well, you said, okay, so I don't know that you said that, that I understand. Maybe the listeners don't. They're not afraid to suffer in silence. They're not afraid to talk to about, talk about their anxiety and depression, get it out in the open, talk to somebody about it. Whereas our generation and older, and there was some stigma to true. that. Yeah. yeah, true. I will say that younger generations of men who I've mentored, once we engaged and in, in developed the, the friendship further along, and I maybe initiated the conversation, they were more willing to bring it up and talk about yeah, their depression or anxiety, and then a real trust was built. So yeah, yeah. What else would you say? Um, young adults who who don't have a father figure or a mother figure or a mother. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Who don't have a, a mother figure. And we we touched on this in a previous episode about fatherlessness and motherlessness. Boy, has that been a reoccurring theme over the last 30 years when we don't have parents involved or healthy relationships. It affects, and a lot of times we don't even have words to say, gee, I didn't have a relationship with my mom. Now I'm having insecurity issues. We suffer in silence with it. You made me think sometimes we don't even know how to connect the dots. Why do I feel this way? Why do I think this way? May, we may not even be realizing that we're suffering in silence. It's just the way of life we've been taught, mm-hmm. we've been given. So example, if I've never had a father figure or a mother figure in my life to nurture me, I don't know what I'm, mi- I'm missing out on. Yeah. And so suffering in silence, and this is a, maybe a silly illustration, but here's one thing I've learned as a father. Mm-hmm. My daughters, who are now all adults, they could suffer in silence, and they have at times because uh-huh. they're human, right? Sure. But I believe that we've opened the door of trust that they could talk to us about most things. Mm -hmm. Recently, my daughter, who's in university, she had an issue with a a brake light in her car. Uh I could have let her take care of that. Uh Now, was she suffering silence? No, No. but she's already having a lot of stress going on in her life. Yeah, being a student. Being a student, working part-time, balancing life. And I just felt, as a dad, what if I take care of this practical thing mm-hmm. so she doesn't have to even think about it right and so went to the the uh, the place got the bulb the guy put it in for us and it would have been complicated had i tried to do it yeah but i just i thought how can we help people who are maybe suffering in silence not to have any more weight added to them right so let's stick a pin in there like so let's say this young woman woman of that happens to be our daughter, didn't have a father to do those things. She may be carrying a lot of everything rests on me. I am responsible to take care of everything else. Without even her recognizing that, she's suffering in silence possibly, potentially. She's, well, yeah. our, our daughter, all, all three are very responsible. and But those who don't have father and mother figures, you and I have great compassion for them. Right, because they take on extra responsibilities. Extra responsibilities, yeah. many times too early in life. Right. Uh, was there any other topic? Because I, I do like what you said as well. There's places <laughs> that people suffer in silence. It doesn't mean, like I love what we said, you can be at a family gathering and things are happening around you, but you're suffering in silence. You can be at church, same thing can happen. Mm-hmm. In fact, I can I can be participating in a worship service, great music. I mean, I just... I feel the presence of God Uh and I can look around and I can make the assumption that everyone else Mm. is doing well like I am at that moment. Yeah. Or times I've been in a service like that and I'm not doing well. Not that I'm putting a a facade up, but people can make the assumption that we're all together and we're all doing great. Yeah. And some people, many people will leave that service that day, again, suffering in silence, really struggling. Right. I'm sure we all, and it could just be our generation have been in the, we, we don't want to say we put on a mask, but we do put on a mask. Oh, we're going to a, a faith community, church event, whatever. And so everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. Recently, I was in a situation that I had different generations of women in my home. And an older woman shared something that she was struggling with. She was so authentic and so real. And I appreciated her sharing her struggle. She's in the middle of a struggle. And a younger woman's response knocked me off my feet in such a good way. She thanked her and honored the older woman for sharing her struggle. She said, how many times have I been in a church service and heard somebody's testimony when everything was said and done, like the conclusion was neatly wrapped in a pretty package. Okay. 
She said, I appreciate that you're telling the story before the conclusion has come. You're in the middle of the struggle. Thank you for sharing that because I needed to know that. When you told me that, that that resonated very deeply with me because that helps me as well. Hey, I appreciate that your life is good in this area right now. But what happened? How did you get there? Right. Yeah. What were the struggles and challenges? How did you maybe suffer in silence in part of that before you you got to the conclusion? Right. Chris makes me think of, I've been reading this book off and on. It's an old book. Let me see what the title is here. The author is Larry Crabb. It's called Becoming a True Spiritual Community. And there is a quote, it's on page 19, that I think really fits in really well here. So Larry Crabb, again, the author, and he wrote this in 1999. To me, it could have been written yesterday, but here's what he says. We've been aiming at an earthbound, this world version of the blessed life. We've been counseled, medicated, religiously entertained and inspired, exhorted, distracted, and formula directed long enough, we've lost our focus on spiritual living. We need a safe place for weary pilgrims. We need to dive into the unmanageable, messy world of relationships to admit our failure and to identify our tensions, to explore our shortcomings. We need to become the answer to our Lord's prayer that we become one the way he and the Father are one. Isn't that incredible? That's exactly what we're talking about. That addresses why the need for authentic mentoring in such a clear and concise way. It's like turning the the light switch on in a dark room for someone suffering in silence. What a privilege you and I have had over the years to sit down across from another person and begin to and ask them about their story and their story will include at some point with trust how they've suffered in silence yeah and said no more of that even if it's just between the two of us right then someone else knows it right and we're going to walk through this together and it's the spiritual principle once you bring things out into the light and you expose it for what it is it takes a lot of the power away it doesn't always tie it up in a neat bow, but at least it's exposed for what it is. Recently, Chris and I have been acquainted with a process of healing prayer that has really been a huge benefit to us. And if you're listening, we felt compelled to offer you maybe a time to do your own introspection. Maybe you're listening to this going, gosh, I'm suffering in silence with my marriage. I don't have anybody to talk to. Or you know what? I've been suffering in silence a long time with my anxiety and depression, or maybe it's an eating disorder. Maybe it's chronic pain. I don't know. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe I had, it's I had loneliness. A, a leader tell me recently, I see a leader in the community say, I feel lonely mm. most of the most of my life. So maybe that's you. <laughs> if you're listening, if you're suffering in silence, we want to give you a practical tool that we know it's it's meant a lot to us and we want to offer it to you. And it's a simple process that you can do (laughs) as often as you need to, because we do believe you will encounter the Holy Spirit and it will really bring a lot of healing into your life. So if there was something that came to your mind when we talked about today's topic, what are you suffering in silence from? And we've already addressed those issues. We'd like to engage you to imagine yourself in a room. And in this room, there's Jesus. So just take a few minutes and put yourself in your mind's eye. Ask the Holy Spirit, if you have a relationship with God, to direct you to a room. Have him give you a picture of you in a room, and Jesus is there. And we won't take the time to unpack all of it, but here's here's what you'll get to do. If you've asked the Holy Spirit, Okay, I've got this pain. Let me use an example. It's my marriage. I feel alone. I'm suffering in silence in my marriage. I want you to to tell Jesus, you know, here's my issue. And I want you to ask him three questions. Jesus, what do you think about my marriage or about my whatever? And don't go on until you get an answer from him. The Holy Spirit will, will show up if you invite him in. What do you think? about my 
situation? What do you feel about my situation? What do you want? This is just a simple, practical way to engage with Jesus through the influence of the Holy Spirit to find some healing if you're suffering alone. We're not meant to suffer alone. And God demonstrated that by being three in one. God the Father is in perfect relationship with God the Son, who's in perfect relationship with God the Holy Spirit. So we just want to offer that up to you. And our prayer for you, if you're that one needing to encounter God in this way, is that you would ask God to show you someone who could help you carry the burden, (laughs) who could help you have the confidence to share what you're suffering so you don't have to be silent. He's always there. But sometimes we need a tangible person, and that would be our prayer for you, that you'd have a tangible person that you could share your heart with and your struggles with. That's reason enough right there is to have a mentor sometimes so we don't have to suffer in silence. Sometimes we have to be taught that. Yeah. I was I was raised in a home I did I would not have ever said because I didn't understand the whole concept suffering in silence. But when I look back over my childhood and teenage years, I really did. I suffered in silence. Mm. It's just what we we survived. It's what we did. It's mm-hmm. what we knew. That's not acceptable, guys. There's so much more. Yeah. So if you are suffering in silence, we hope we well we know <laughs> we've given you some good tools. Have the courage to use them. Have the courage to ask God himself to provide someone for you to to share your suffering with. Thank you for tuning in today. We want to thank you as always for listening. If today was helpful, if something that you listened to was helpful, we would really love it if you would go to Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, download, subscribe, and for all things related to podcast, if you'd like to give a financial contribution to help us continuing bringing this sort of broadcasting to you, just go to FahrenheitMentoring.org. Hi, this is Chris Corral, producer of the Fahrenheit Real Life Mentoring Podcast. This podcast is produced through a partnership with the Confetti Corral Boutique and Michelle Corral Realtor. To find out more about these businesses who support our vision and ministry, go to confetticorral.com or find them on Facebook.